Jen, Interpretation Officer at Royal Botanical Gardens. I'm back in the Hendry Valley Nature Sanctuary to explore more about the impacts of wildlife feeding on our sanctuaries. Now today I'm joined with our terrestrial ecologist, Lindsay Barr, who's going to explain a little bit about what she's noticing in the forest ecosystems. So my role as terrestrial ecologist is to look after the land ecosystem. So that's the forest and meadows. Part of my time is spent monitoring how the plants and wildlife are doing. And the other part is doing performing restoration projects that help improve habitat quality as well as conserve biodiversity. Another part of my job is to maintain trail safety and that involves monitoring um, for hazard trees and then facilitating their removal when necessary. And what would you say you spend most of your time doing? Most of my time is spent controlling invasive species, specifically invasive plants that are out competing our native plant communities. Now we heard already from assistant ecologist Mallory about some of the impacts on animals such as the increase in mammal populations and animal densities. Uh, have you noticed any impacts on the forest plants due to the wildlife feeding? Yes, I would say the biggest impact is invasive plants themselves spreading um, indirectly through people moving off trail to feed wildlife, but also directly through the seed itself. Does that mean that the seeds in bird seeds can actually grow? Low quality seed can be contaminated with weed seeds like thistles and bindweed and that's just a byproduct of when the seed is harvested. We've also found white proso millet which is part of the bird seed itself growing along our trail. Now this doesn't mean that it's an invasive plant right now but it is an indicator that it could become one in the future. Hmm. Are we only seeing these impacts along the trail edges? No these impacts are are going further and more beyond the trail edges and that's from animals carrying seed away. They don't like to feed on the trail. They feel more exposed. And also the act of walking off the trail um, also facilitates the spread of our existing invasive species that we're dealing with right now. So here we have a perfect example of what's happening when people are going off trail. You can see that people have been going up and down the slope. Plants are getting trampled here and uh, the soil is really getting compacted erosion is starting and really there's there's nothing that's really able to grow but invasive species tend to like colonizing these areas because they thrive on disturbance that's one main characteristic of an invasive plant um, you can see here that we have tried to revegetate the slope but people are continuing to go up and down and our plantings aren't really taking a hold as we'd like and spreading themselves now if we're uh, feeding animals, um, are they no longer relying on the native species? Now this could be a thing that's happening, but we don't really have enough evidence to prove that this is going on. Um, but we have to realize that this is our busiest trail at RBG. 70% or over 70% of our visitors are feeding wildlife on this trail. So that could be a big impact. Chipmunks and squirrels are nature's little tree planters, so if their diet is being supplemented by peanuts, it could mean that there's not as many acorns, walnuts, hickories getting distributed throughout the forest. And in the future, this could mean a completely different forest structure. Mm -hmm. So it really seems as though small behaviors like feeding wildlife can have big long-term term impacts. That's right. Ecosystems are extremely complex and we have to look at a big picture when we're dealing with ecosystems and looking at the long-term impacts. This forest has experienced many impacts in the last two decades. These impacts range from insect outbreaks to periods of drought, invasive species introductions and spread, visitor impacts, and changes in the food web. I've personally witnessed the loss of ash trees, our canopy ash trees, from the emerald ash borer and have been involved in the coordination of removing these trees from the trails. And over the last two years, in Henry Valley specifically, we've lost 
crossed over 20 mature oak trees along our trails. And I'm not saying that this is a direct result of feeding wildlife, but it is, uh, oak decline is a result of multiple factors working together to reduce um, the forest's ability to respond to stress. And what would you consider some best practices if we do want to experience that connection with wildlife? So best practices definitely stay on the trail. That is your the best thing you can do when visiting our nature sanctuaries. Leave, keep litter with you and put it in the garbage at our trailheads. And instead of feeding wildlife, maybe buy a pair of binoculars or just sit in one place and sort of absorb what's around you. Witness uh, the parent, bird parents feeding their young themselves. That, that to me is a better connection. Mm -hmm. I have two children and if I take them on this trail, they immediately want to feed the birds and the chipmunks and the squirrels. Um, so I take them to other trails where it's not quite so busy and they, they experience nature in different ways and they don't even think about asking to feed the wildlife. Now, are there other ways that people can help to protect and restore our nature sanctuaries? Yes, definitely. We have an amazing group of volunteers and they always help us with our invasive species management and our tree planting events. We have a great group called the Biodiversity Guardians and they actually are wonderfully trained at removing invasive plants and they go out on their own time at their leisure and they manage invasive species in key areas of our properties. That sounds like a nice way to feel like you're contributing to protecting nature. That's right. It was great to hear from you today, Lindsay. Thank you so much for sharing. It's uh, wonderful to know ways that we can help to contribute to the health of our forests and nature sanctuaries. Stay tuned, everyone. We're going to dig into this a little bit more with uh, some of our other experts.